Now, the other thing I just wanted to add before we end is uh, that an AVL tree, once implemented like this, uh, can be used as a heap. Can be used either as a main heap or as a max heap. And that's because when we look at the heap operations, so let's compare a binary heap uh, with an array based implementation that we have done earlier in sorting with an AVL tree based implementation. So the implementations that the, the operations that we wanted to implement on a heap was well, inserts and deletes for sure. Sorry, I should write the operations separately. So operations, insert on a binary heap, it takes order uh, log n time. AVL tree also order log n time. Delete binary heap, deletion takes order log n time. AVL tree deletion takes order log in time. Now, if it's a min heap, we can either do extract min or extract max. Uh, that, by the way, uh, delete obviously on a heap is the same as extract min or extract max. Uh, but, you know, on an AVL tree, you would you would have to find the minimum or the maximum element first before deleting it right in a in a binary heap that that uh, minimum or maximum value is already available at the at, at the root that means in the leftmost index of the array so extracting just means uh, you know swapping it again with the to to preserve the tree structure swapping it with whichever is the rightmost element in the array and then readjusting the heap to satisfy the heap property. In an AVL tree, what you would do is you would go down literally to the minimum or the maximum element. And that will only have a single child, at most one child, because it's going to be either, you know, how do you find the min or max? We've done this in the trees foundations. You start from the root and then either you just keep following the left pointers or the right pointers, depending on whether it's min or max. And then you will delete that node from the AVL tree and the readjustments will take order log n time. So extract min max, take order log n time. But in heaps, you can also just look at the min or max value in constant time because it's right there at the beginning of the array. In an AVL tree, you'll need log n time just to, you know, peek at the min or max value unless you maintain it separately uh, as as an add additional variable that you keep updating every time the heap is updated uh, so since all of these heap operations can be done by an avl yeah, tree also in a binary heap is going to be order of n whereas an avl tree it is going to be order of log n yeah, so search, obviously, a heap is not built for search. So we don't even talk about search in a heap since uh, it's not part of the priority queue abstract data type. I mean, the search operation is not part of that. So yeah, this would be order n. This is order log n. But that's precisely why for search trees, we go for a different tree. Uh, if we just wanted extract min, max, and peaking, uh, we need not go for an AVL tree. The other thing, uh, the other operation that we have talked about. Onkar, I think you have to reshare. I think if you're writing something, I'm not seeing, you're not seeing. That. Yeah, sorry. I don't know why this keeps happening. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah, Speak min. yeah we missed the last two lines. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I just wrote that, you know, peaking at the min or max in a heap, in a heap takes order one time. In an AVL tree, you will have to go down, right? In the worst case, go down. Uh, the entire length or the height of the tree, which would be order log n. 
and searching in a heap search is not something i'm considering as part of heap operations so that's why i i wrote it in red uh but build heap build heap is something we could do in order n time using an array based implementation and the analysis of that was uh, something i had in the sorting foundations so the question is can we build an avl tree so suppose i wanted to use an avl tree for a heap which i guess those of you who don't have a priority queue library in your programming language can can use can build heap be done in order and time using an avl tree and so what do you think yeah mohammed um actually i had some questions i i it, i am not ready to answer this okay okay that's fine let me just write this down an avl tree cannot implement build heap the build heap operation in order in time and the argument is uh so uh, we can give a proof by contradiction suppose we could suppose build heap was doable in order in time so we could take a bunch of n elements n numbers build a heap on them using avl trees and then we could use that heap now as a search tree to actually sort all the numbers so an in order traversal an in order traversal of that avl tree could be done naturally in order n time right suppose we build an avl tree in order n time we can do an in order traversal of that avl tree in order n time this means we can sort n numbers in order n time which is a contradiction since we know sorting a bunch of numbers using at least comparison based sorts uh is impossible so that means we have a contradiction and that means our original claim is falsified so build heap cannot be done in order in time so this type of sorting is uh, as you might remember it's called tree sort it's a different sorting algorithm which relies on uh, transforming the input uh, and storing it in the form of a search tree and then doing an in order traversal to sort the numbers so uh, that means the best we can do so build heap must Uh, it, it cannot be done uh, so we could use this argument to say that it cannot be done in better than n log n time it must take n log n time so not just we can uh, we can make not just the statement that it can't be done in order n time we can say that it cannot be done in better than n log n time so that means uh, 
we, the way we would build a heap using an avial tree would be by repeated insertion. Right, since we can't do better than n log n time, might as well do it by repeated insertion. Or we can say insertion one by one. And that we know will take n times log n, since each insertion takes log n time. Okay, so that's uh, that's all I wanted to cover. I had a few diagrams from one of the textbooks, uh, Goodrich and Tamasya, but I, I don't think we need them. If anything, they might just confuse more. But it was just to illustrate single and double rotation. So LL and RR rotations are single rotations. RL and LR are double rotations. So different textbooks tend to use slightly different conventions. And so I would not worry about this because the conventions used there, that we used was that X is the node that we are trying to insert. Uh, capital A is the first ancestor where there is an imbalance problem. There is these, uh, these authors use a different notation. Okay, any final questions before we stop? Mohammed? Uh, thank you. So, to to make sure that I got this right, so for either um, the deletion or the insertion, um, we we have to go up until and check the uh, balancing factors, and if we find a balancing factor which is not valid, then we do some kind of rotation, we fix it, and then. If the height has changed, we just repeat this and go higher and check the balancing factors again and do it kind of repeat it, right? Yeah, so in the case of insertion, when you do the insertion, you keep going up, updating the balance factors. Uh, but when you reach a node whose balance factor has become zero, Right, maybe it was imbalanced, but you reach an ancestor whose balance factor has now become zero. Mm -hmm. uh, that means the height of that tree did not increase. Subtree, I mean, the height of that subtree did not change, did not increase or decrease. Whatever it was, it became perfectly balanced now. So that's where you stop. Mm -hmm. Or you reach a node that whose balance factor is off, it's plus two or minus two. In which case, doing a rotation will guarantee that you can stop there. Because after the rotation, the height of that subtree you can show, and we showed here in the class, that it won't change, it won't differ from whatever it was earlier. I so see. that's what happens with uh, with insertion. Otherwise, I saw until you reach that point, uh, as long as you are seeing balance factors become plus one or minus one, let's say they were zero, but they became plus one or minus one, that means the heights are changing for those subtrees. You have to keep going up. So the termination condition is, of course, either you reach the root or you reach a node whose, whose balance factor became zero. It was minus one or plus one, but it became zero. Or its balance factor was off and doing the rotation fixes things. That's for insertion. For deletion, uh, when you delete x, uh, obviously the balance factors there are going to change. So in the case of deletion, the balance factor becoming zero is actually a troubling sign. In the case of insertion, the balance factor becoming zero means that you can stop, right? That's, that's like the, the stop signal. But in the case of deletion, balance factors becoming zero after deletion means that the height of the tree has reduced. So uh, it's actually reaching a, so uh, reaching a balance factor of plus one or minus one is the, is, is the good, is a good sign for deletion because that means things were balanced earlier, but re removing X caused a slight disbalance, but uh, you know, it didn't change the height of that subtree.
so uh, so we don't have to keep you we don't have to go up i right? remember we uh, we 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 had that in the green case the in the deletion discussion the height didn't change that means the balance factors became minus 1 or plus 1 that's where we stop mm -hmm. if they became zero there is a chance that there could be a ripple effect uh, we have to keep going up and when they become plus 2 or minus 2 that's when rotations are needed but then rotations don't mark the end of the reversal up in deletion it might still be the case that you have to keep going up depends on which of these three cases you are in mm -hmm. um just that you know we were talking about like going up and we, we might actually check and you know at some point we might further go up um so it looks like that we have to somehow keep a pointer to our parents and like unlike how we used to build the trees with just having two pointers to the right and left. yeah so if you are using a recursive procedure then you would naturally get back to your parent when you return from uh the child when the recursive call returns from the child uh, or if you are using an iterative procedure the way i wrote things in the trees foundations was in an iterative way because when you don't care about rebalancing you can just blindly go down and just end everything there so you don't have to even store anything there so it's just a plain decrease and conquer um, algorithm that could be written uh, in an iterative way but when when uh, you have to rebalance uh, it is still decrease and conquer but it's decrease and conquer in the opposite direction bottom up so you can't really write that in an iterative way unless you have the path stored somehow so if you don't explicitly have it stored in the form of a stack you have to rely on recursion to give you the parent you don't need an explicit pointer to the parent uh, to implement this i see but you do need to store the height or the balance factor with each node so it does require some extra space mm -hmm. and probably the height is just enough because we can just get the balancing factor from the height right yeah you can look at the heights of your two subtrees and get the balance factor that way so you have to keep updating the heights in that case mm -hmm. okay all right thank you Okay, so since there are no further questions, we can stop here.